Hello and welcome to another episode of Chasing Excellence. My name is Patrick Cummings, and as always, I'm here with Ben Bergeron. Every week on the show, we dedicate some time to exploring how we can live a life of better health and increased fulfillment. We answer your questions about the five factors of health, dive deep on living a life of excellence, and explore the strategies and frameworks to help us chase what truly matters. Thank you so much for joining us. And how are you, Ben? I'm doing great. Thank you, Patrick. You were, ju- you were just asking me about something and I wanted to wait to tell you because I was going to tell you when we started this episode anyways, but my arms are covered in mosquito bites. Yeah, it looks like... And it looks like I have like like chicken pox. Yes. Because it's really bad. And so we're recording on a Thursday and this happened on a Saturday. And I and I I thought of you when this happened. I was planting some trees in the yard. My wife was like, can you plant the, you know, so whatever. So the project was probably like two or three hours long. And so it's in Maine, in Southern Maine, it's black fly season, which just means like all the black flies are hatching. And they're just like, it, we have like, it's usually between Mother's Day and Father's Day that they're just like, they're just bad. And uh, and so they came a little bit early this year. And anyways, my point of telling you the story and why I thought it was funny that you noticed it was that I was, so I was planting these <laughs> trees and I knew like the black flies were like surrounding me. Like I had pants on. Is it mosquitoes or black flies? Black flies. So they're black fly bites? Yes. Black flies don't bite, do they? No. These ones do. These ones do. Dude, your arms are like I know, they're covered. mangled. But but why I'm laughing is because as it was happening, my, 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 my wife was like, you're stupid. And I was like, you're right. Don't be a victim. I was like, I'm going to see if I can do this without complaining and without going inside to like get bug spray or get a, get a jacket on. And or, there or it is, up. folks. We've tipped over we've, the edge. We've, we've gone too far. To, we've gone too far. <laughs> but literally, like, the, it's dumb. I'm not saying this is a good thing to do. But literally, as this happening, I was like, I'm going to see if I can do this without complaining. And I did. And I'm now paying the price for oh it. Oh, my God. Anyways. For people I can't see, it's so many it's, you can't count. Yeah, there's a lot. And it's actually better. It's like stars it's like a, in the universe. It's like, <laughs> it's like five days ago. It was dumb. I, mean, I admit that. But while I was doing it, I was like, I'm going to, let's see if I can do this. And, and that's why I don't live in And Maine. that's why you know, very few people do. <laughs> All right. Outside Holy of smokes. outside of taking Chasing Excellence just slightly too seriously, here's what we've got coming up uh, this episode. We've got listener questions about blood work, recommendations for stretching, uh, coaching a friend, and more. Our workout this week is going to be a conversation on whether we think CrossFit gyms are offering a watered down version of the methodology and what to do if you feel like you need something more. And we're going to introduce a new 30-day challenge, which will have nothing to do with bugs. We'll do that at the end of the show. So stick around for that. All right, ready? Right. Warm up. We start each episode with your questions about the five factors of health, those few fundamental behaviors that most positively affect our performance, vitality, and longevity. Those five factors are how we eat, how we move, how we think, how we connect, and how we recover. And whoops. And as drop we always do, <laughs> or drop the pen, as we always do, start with that move category. This question, uh, as it relates to stretching daily for hips and shoulders, does CrossFit's methodology of uh, constantly varied hold true. Is it more beneficial to have different stretches or are repeated stretches done consistently more effective? Uh, the latter, as I say, yes. Yeah. The latter. Yeah. Yep. Um, so repeated can, stretches done consistently. Yeah. With a, with a big asterisk next to that, uh, uh, assuming that you figured out what moves the needle for you the most. Got it. And that's really where it comes in is, and this is training in general, you know, kind of is whatever's going to create the biggest bang for your buck, the greatest adaptation, you want to do that. Now, mm-hmm. it's true that we fall at the mar- we fail at the margins of our existence, but if that margin is range of motion, you've identified what that is. It's like kind of saying like, if I need to, if I recognize my back squat is really, really low, should I work on my back squat or should I kind of do some other stuff? Should I do goblet squats and air mm-hmm. squats? And other, it's, no, you do the thing that's going to create the greatest adaptation so once you identify what those things are, stick with it until you feel like you're getting diminishing returns. And therein lies the opportunity to just dabble with a little bit of variance mm. where use, if you're, if we're stretching our hips and you realize, oh, pigeon pose, wow, after pigeon pose, that really opens me up. Hang with that. Like you don't need to do yeah. 90-90s. You don't need to do wall squats. You don't need to do couch stretch. Like if that's the thing that you get like the biggest um, test and retest. So where are you before? Then stretch, do the movement. Where are you after? Whatever creates the biggest difference, that's the thing that should be 80% of your programming. You use the other 20% just to feel out, is there something that's actually better for me today? 
Got it. So identify like once you've identified, oh, this is a problem. Lean there's in. no reason to lean to in until seek you, randomness. Just until like, you re- feel like it's not actually leading you down a greater greatest path. Because what will end up happening is, let's use that pigeon pose. Wow, your the the external rotation of your hip is phenomenal now. Um, even the trailing hip flexor is really good. But maybe it's that your um, your IT band is now tight, or it is your glute med that is tight, and those things will also be. But you get it. All right. Next question is in our think category. It is from Victor. He says, I've been doing CrossFit for 10 years now, and it's changed my life. I've never been as fit as I am today. Five sessions a week running a marathon last year and a half, uh, and a half this year. Signed up for a triathlon in September, got back uh, into my first love of soccer, swimming, hiking, etc. Despite being happy with my physical capa- uh, capabilities, I still don't, quote unquote, look as fit. My arms aren't super defined, no veins everywhere, etc. Though I don't do it for the looks, I still get a little jealous of buddies that are less capable, but look fitter than I do. How do I separate these two things, quote unquote, being versus quote unquote, looking and finally being happy with who I am? Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit more loaded of a question than probably first appears, which yeah. is probably why you put it mm-hmm. in this think category. Um, Cause I think the easy place to go to is like this idea of function versus um, um, fashion, fashion. Yeah. The idea of like you know, looking good versus performing good. And yeah, that's like, that's a part of the equation. You go, listen, like the ripped up veins and the, the, the chiseled six pack doesn't necessarily mean these people are going to live forever or that they could outperform you in said task. That's part of the conversation. I don't think that's nearly as interesting as the second part of this conversation, which is jealousy Mm. and this idea of us measuring up against other people and this idea of us sh- falling short of perfection mm-hmm. in our ideals. Victor's killing it. Like you're as fit yeah. as you have ever been. You're doing triathlons. You've been doing CrossFit for 10 years. It's a part of your life. It's changed who you are. How do you become happy with who you are? One of the sayings is com- comparison is the thief of all joy, right? Right. And one of the things about comparison that we have to recognize, and we've talked about this on the show before, you don't get to piecemeal the comparisons. You don't get Mm. to go, um, Billy has better abs and Joe runs a faster mile and Frank earns more money than me. And um, Sally has a better relationship with her spouse and Sarah um, seems really happy on Instagram and they have a great relationship with their, uh, their, their parents and they have a nicer house and their kids go to private school. That's not how, it, that's not the way, that's not reality that mm-hmm. we have to accept real. It's, would you be willing to change wholesale, everything, all relationships, um, um, health, um, family, friends, your past, your potential future, your thoughts, your mental wellness, your goals, your ambitions. We got to trade all of those things wholesale with another person. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you kind of go like, that's not a, that's not nearly as appealing. So in terms of the, the true tool that we can give to uh, Victor, I'm using all the, the, uh, that we give to Victor. And I like that. Victor Frankel is one of my favorite authors for mindset. So <laughs> yep. it's, this is fitting. Maybe it's him. Um, is that like, just like when you start playing that game, recognize that you're setting yourself, you're not playing a game. This whole thing is rigged against you. It's not the actual game. The be- The real game is you have you accept that reality. How well are you doing with you? And if, if Victor kind of takes a quick peek at that, he goes, wow, I've never been as fit as I've ever been. This is pretty awesome. Not saying that you're still not going to do that because that's what we do as human beings. As hierarchical beings, we try to always figure out who's the dominant in each category. Mm -hmm. And that's what we chase. You, we, you, we, me, I have to learn to override that default mechanism. It's there. Now it's there, not pretending like 
Victor isn't doing something well, or Victor's got a, a screw loose, mm-hmm. or like this is all inside of us, all love us for sure. It's why Instagram's as dangerous as it is because you get to only compare what they want you to compare to. Mm-hmm. We need to learn to override that comparison mechanism. Hard. But every time we do it, we play, this is the prism we bring it through. Okay, wholesale, not his abs, not his calves, not his shoulders. His life. Life, the whole thing. And even if you go like, I would rather have his life, then cool, you can't. So now it's time to radically accept reality, like radical acceptance. You can't. The reality is you're living your life. Now, can we use that wholesale person as a role model? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this becomes a productive thing, but also recognize that the people we put on pedestals, I listened to something earlier today, which in the saying was, there are no adults. Mm. Like no one's got it all figured out. Right. No one's got it. There's no adults. Yep. We're all, everyone's trying to figure this thing out. So when you go like, man, I would really trade places with that person. Maybe not if you really pull back the curtain. Yeah. Like, you know, the other saying is like, if, if I, if we, everyone threw their problems in a pile, a lot of us would be really, really quick to pull our problems back once you see like, so this is not a thing about, um, looks versus function, aesthetics versus performance. To me, this is a conversation about comparison and jealousy as a wholesale Mm -hmm. and recognizing it's a game, it's a destructive game, but you can use tools and you can use it to your advantage. The tool is wholesale, not peace. And the advantage is if it is wholesale role model, cool. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What are their practices? How did they get there? Let's learn from them. Increase curiosity. Love it. Yeah. Cool. Next one uh, in our eat category. I'm wanting to get blood work done to figure out what supplements are right for me. I've done the Bod Pod, which I, I don't know what that is, but I presume it's a it's a brand of some kind, and uh, metabolic testing. What blood tests do you recommend for checking deficiencies? Yeah. Uh, so Bod Pod is a, is a body composition, body okay. fat. Got it. Is it like uh, a technical thing? Like it's You get a, into a okay, pod. Okay, it's actual pod. And it, it's air it. displacement determines like God, how- helpful. Thank you. How- lean you are. Um, okay. Uh, so instead of like, you know, check your HSCRP and check your hemoglobin and check your liver function. It's like, that's, it's, it's a lot easier to go. And the only reason I'm going to give these two is because of the two I've used, Mm -hmm. honestly, I've used that a couple others, but, um, inside tracker, Uh, I think we've talked about them a fair amount we've way back when, before, right? Yeah. Yep. Inside Tracker gives you a really, um, really in-depth uh, panel. They'll give you like 40 different um, metrics and a really, really simple way to understand where you are on the spectrum and what you could do for supplements to improve anything that's out of whack. Mm-hmm. That's That would be my like, kind of like wholesale, like blanket statement approach for anybody. It's also fairly inexpensive and you can do it at any lab corp or oh, what's the other one um it'll come to me later on but it doesn't matter but you can do it at any of these um like labs that are in you know there's gonna be one within 20 minutes of you um the other one is wild health mm-hmm. which we've talked about on this podcast as well yep. and that one you actually get uh it's not it's really hard to read the reports and um get some but they give you a practitioner yep. to walk through it with you and they can connect the dots that wouldn't otherwise be connected mm-hmm. where they go, Hey, this is high and this is low. Usually that means you're having caffeine late in the day mm-hmm. and you're like, what? Like, that's like, and there's no way you're going to get that by analyzing a report on your own yep. or they go, Hey, just as a heads up, we did this and it looks like you're predisposed for Alzheimer's the keto diet might be right for you, even though you are a CrossFit athlete and that's not the right thing for mm-hmm. most CrossFit athletes. It might be a thing that you want to, exp- and it's like, they'll go a few notches deeper on that. So those are my two, Inside Tracker for get a report online that you can analyze yourself or Wild Health um, if you want to work with somebody on a little more ex- um, exhaustive level. Got it. Next question is from Elena. 
In our recover bucket, she says, I've always been fairly disciplined disciplined person, training five days a week, eating clean, uh, dedicating time to my music, setting aside time daily to journal, meditate, and connect with both myself uh, and others. And I've Amazing. always been someone who <laughs> needs Jeez. a good nine hours of sleep to function at my best. However, since becoming a mother, a lot of these things have changed. I have a one-year-old daughter and I'm currently pregnant with my second. I still mostly prioritize clean eating and get four to five workouts in a week. Where I am definitely lacking is my personal time. I no longer journal, meditate, create music, that connect deeply with others or myself for that matter. And I think we can all agree that that sleep with a one-year-old is unpredictable at best. I concur. Uh, what are your thoughts on continuing to strive for the things that bring value to your life when you are currently in a phase that demands so much of your mental and physical energy as well as your time? Okay. Our, amazing, right? Yeah. Our, our listeners are awesome. Um, I feel like a lot of our listeners are having kids these days too. Maybe it's just, <laughs> maybe I'm just selecting these questions, yeah. but like I feel like we've had a lot of new mother questions. But it's so cool. Like what a, a truly holistic approach that she's taking. Yeah. You know, like all the things from yoga to working out to meditating, journaling, connecting with herself and others and finding time for nature and music and art. Like She's also being like, Ben, don't tell me to do those things because I already did them. Yeah, it's like, it's, a, a, <laughs> it's so freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your this is the idea is... Fitness is a hedge against sickness. Yep. What we want to do is in peacetime, get as ready as possible for when you have to enter into a battle. And being a young mother is a battle. So there's going to be times that you're not going to have things in perfect alignment. When you are truly in a battle at war, guess what? a lot of those people aren't going for long walks in nature. Right. A lot of people aren't eating the way that they would normally eat. A lot of people aren't training the way they would normally treat. They're going to fighting a freaking war. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe that's a little bit an exaggerated uh, um, parable, uh, analogy, but the point is we're not always going to be in perfect balance and harmony. When we can get there, yes, let's do that because then we are creating this buffer so that when we do get knocked down, we're still pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. Like this is the sickness, wellness, fitness continuum. If you are fit, and I don't mean just two and a half minute frans and six minute miles and 400 pound back squats. I mean, at peace with yourself, fulfilled, strong relationships, you fall, to, you fall asleep easily, you wake up excited for the next day. When that's your norm, and then you go through these young child development years and postpartum stuff, like there's going to be those times where you get knocked back a little bit. Not as big a deal when we were spending so much time on that other end of the spectrum. If you're already sick, if you have none of these practices in place, you're eating processed foods, you're getting minimal sleep, you have very unhealthy relationships, you're not sure what your purpose or what you're chasing in life is, and then you get hit with us, this is when the bad things happen. Yeah. You are set up. Just recognize that this is normal. It's a part of life. It's not supposed to be balanced every day, every week, every month, every year, or every decade. We're always going to have our little undulations. We might even have times that we need to pivot. Mm -hmm. We might have times that we're out of balance. Can we create, A, enough of a buffer so when that happens, we're still good? And B, try to find the really, again, kind of back to that stretching question, what are the pillars, what are the things that create the most bang for your buck? And I think she's nailing them. Mm -hmm. Like, the connection one, all that stuff, it takes a lot of, I, I get it. Like, especially the stuff on yourself, like meditating and journaling. For me, those are the first ones that fall off too. Yep. It really is. Yep. But I'm not going to miss my workout. Like if I miss my workout, like things fall apart. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, what is the leading, it's not leading indicator, but what is the leading action yeah. that um, other things are um, consequentially cause to fall into place? Yep. For me, it's training. Like if I am going to the gym every day, I'm going to eat better because I'm like, I'm a healthy person. I need to perform better. Once I stop doing that for four or five days, going to the gym, things start to get out of whack. Mm -hmm. my, my mindset isn't where it is. I'm not as good with my, the only other one I might put in there as, as high as that, um, honestly, before nutrition is sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's only because if it's the extremes, like if I'm sleeping under seven hours consistently, as she said as well, she really needs the nine, but it's hard to do it with the child. Okay, like 
You know it's a nine, but th- this is the reality of what it is right now. Find the things that will give you the biggest payoff knowing that you're out of balance. It sounds like it's continuing to eat clean and working out and trying really um, purposefully to be intentional with the sleep, knowing a lot of it is outside of our control. Yeah. One thing that I think about as I'm, as I'm listening is this concept of upper and lower bounds. In other words, like what is the upper bound of your fitness, which is like not too much, right? Like uh, beyond an upper bound, like I have to work out 14 times a week, right? Like that might be too much, but, but an upper bound, which for us might be like five to six times a week is like, that's the upper bound. We never define the lower bound. And so we always only judge ourselves by, are we hitting the upper Mm. bound? Mm. But in, in Elena's case, it might be more important to distinguish or define like what's the lower bound. What is because I thought of this when you said like I like here's my here's the like, the the line in the sand that I want. There's some non negotiables. Yeah, like and like, it might be what. for when in this phase, the lower bound of exercise or fitness might be whatever. Right, three workouts a week, two workouts a week, and a long walk, whatever it might be. And I think that we can create lower and upper bounds for each one of these factors. Sleep certainly, like for me. And I, like, when I'm looking at it, when I look over the course, like what I do for sleep is I look at last week and I say, did my average sleep, and just use the Fitbit to do it. And actually the, the eight sleep, I kind of have both now, which is wonderful. Is if, am I under like seven hours and 15 minutes? And because what I've noticed is on the weeks that I'm below that, I can, like, I can feel it. And if I'm above it, I'm like, not ideal. The upper bound would be eight hours. But to me, the lower bound is somewhere in that seven and a half hour range. And I can tell when I'm not. Same with fitness, same with sleep. And you can lower bound and upper bound every one of these factors. And then be okay that for a while we're hitting the lower bound. Lower bound is not bad. It's the beginning of good, (laughs) right? And so I think that that can be a really helpful way to, because it just seems like she's beating herself up for not getting exactly where she used to be without taking into consideration just the context is so much different. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. All right. Last question we've got in our warm up is in our connect bucket from Sergio. I have a friend who played competitive lacrosse with me. He wanted to work with me last year. So I moved him from New York to Connecticut. He now does CrossFit every morning while I train and comes to work with me and gets coached by myself and his leader inside uh, the office. I am having a hard time coaching him. When I give him advice, he tends to disagree with me. He always comes back at the end of the day after he disagrees and says he will try harder to have a student mentality, but it's beginning to be the same story every time. How would you further this relationship? Good friend, Sergio, moving yeah. people and coaching them. And, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So the, the crux of the issue is um, this person wants to learn, is kind of there to learn. He's interested in investing in this other person, but it's kind of like um, talking to a brick wall or even getting resistance as it's happening. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, I would start off with this person with some first principles. Mm-hmm. And it's like in this situation where you're truly like the mentor role, a coach role, yeah. if this is a friendship it's a lot harder, but this person- It seems like it's like, this is come a here and I will help you do- Yes. XYZ. Yeah. We have to start off with what are the, what's the first thing that we're trying to do? Mm-hmm. And the first, the very first thing that we need to do is get you to a, a quote, growth mindset, to be coachable. Yep. That's the whole deal. Now, once we establish that that is the very first thing, and it, it we, we got to have that. We, then it's on both parties to- to work towards that. So it's not just him. It's also um, Sergio Mm -hmm. where he needs to coach towards the growth mindset. And if he's talking a lot about like, Hey, I don't even know what the coaching position is, but like, let's say it's a CrossFit coach. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're talking in terms of definitive characteristics. Well, that's drilling in the fixed mindset. Like, listen, you're, you're not good at double unders. Mm -hmm. What the person hears is, this is who I am. I'm not good at double unders. If the person says, listen, you're as coachable as you are with a little bit of extra work and effort, controllables, fixed, like variables, not Mm -hmm. fixed, work and effort, variables. Um, We could see a lot of progress, not pass fail, progress, and feel really good about these in a short period of time. 
Like that's the different way of communicating this is the language we use as coaches will further reinforce whether someone is uh, willing to take the coaching because it might not be the athlete. It might be Sergio. Mm -hmm. Now, it also might be the athlete. And the athletes, then it's the responsibility again of the coach. No such thing as a bad student, only a bad coach. Some take more work than others, but it's up to you as the coach to go, ooh, this person's no matter what I'm saying here. Now you got to really go into getting that mind shift to always, always, always go into, I want him to believe he's coachable. Mm -hmm. That's a, I want him to believe he's coachable. So what is the language? What is the environment? What are the metrics I'm going to use to get him to believe that what I'm saying to him is improving him? Mm -hmm. That's a harder battle than somebody that comes in and is like, teach me Obi-Wan, right. you know? Right. And they just, they go through that. But um, just to kind of further drill down on that, like the fix and the growth, and that's kind of been, you know, it's, it's kind of... Um, Carol Dweck has done such a phenomenal job of, of bringing this language to all of us that we needed so badly yep. and it's become mainstream, but, um, there's a, there's, there's another level to it. Uh, there's actually two other levels. There is the fixed mindset, which is my belief is that, um, I was born with a certain set of talents and skill sets and, um, those are just either going to manifest throughout my life or not. So you hear this all the time, like, um, Billy's really good at math, mm -hmm. right? Um, Jill, um, has a really hard time reading. I'm, 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 I, it's so funny. Cause just yesterday, Emerson, my six year old has, was a T-ball and his coach was like, you're really good at baseball. And I was like, no, there you go. Like, no, right. that's not what, but yeah. not, I know he doesn't know anybody. Exactly. Like, right. I get it. But that's that, it. That's like, you're so good at sports. The fixed is ingrained in the fixed mindset that you, and now luckily they're ingraining that in a positive way, which is good. Right. Yep. But there's, so, but even with that ingrained in the positive way, there's, let me just flip over. The next one is the growth mindset, mm -hmm. which is. I believe that talents are not innate, that they're grown and worked on through practice and hard work, mm -hmm. which has just been proven. Like, yes, Michael Phelps has a wingspan of a, yep. you know, an albatross and he's, you know, like there's some innate things yes. like, you know, Michael Jordan probably wouldn't be Michael Jordan if he's five foot two. Like there are some innate things. Like he probably had a bigger vertical. If he never trained, would probably still be able to jump 30 inches, right? He had 46 inches because he worked hard, but Yes, I'm not denying that whatsoever, but it's not fixed. Because you have a hard time reading doesn't mean you're always going to have a hard time reading if you work really hard at it. Because you're not, quote, a good runner doesn't mean that you always need to be a poor runner. You could become an average or even a very good runner. These things are malleable, which is understanding that is that growth mindset. Mm -hmm. If I work towards these things, I can get it. There's something that's not talked about in, in Dweck's um, research, which is, at least I don't believe it is. It's been a long time, but it's the fake growth mindset. Mm, I haven't, I don't, we've never talked about that. So the fake growth mindset is, um, I'm going to pretend like I'm here to learn. I'm going to pretend like I'm here to do the hard work, Yeah. but, um, deep down. So like my outward, my outward like the actions of somebody who's coachable. It, it's the, exactly. It's the actions of someone who's coachable, but inside they don't believe it. Yep. That's a fake growth mindset. Yep. So now we have kind of three levels and there's a level above that. So there's the fake, I'm sorry, there's the, the fixed, there's the fake growth. There's truly the growth, which is a really nice place to be, but there's actually something that we can do above that as coaches, which is not only coach to the like, um, you know, there's, they redid this study, which we've talked about a whole bunch of times, where they had a group of um, elementary school kids take a test. And when the teachers returned the test, everyone knows the punchline of the story, they wrote one of two things. They wrote, um, good job, you're really smart. That was group A. Group B got the test back and said, good job, you worked really hard. And everyone knows where this is going is the group that got the, you worked really hard when they got the test that was two grade levels above them continued to work hard because they are hard workers. Yep. Whereas the people that were really smart couldn't do it and just folded and collapsed because <laughs> I'm supposed to be smart and I can't do this. What's wrong with me? And just fall apart. They redid the study with a third group. Mm. When they passed back the test, there was, there was nothing written. Instead, they gave them a high five and said, nice job. Mm-hmm. 
that group outperformed both groups. Really? Where it's, I am now connecting with you, yeah. the human being. Yep. As coaches, this is what our job is. Yeah. We have to set our people up for success as much as possible. And when I say coaches, I, I, listeners shouldn't read like, well, I'm not a CrossFit coach. If you're a parent, if you- Being a coach is a mindset. It's, it's not a Coach job. is a mindset. Yeah. Ex I love that. Yeah. It's, it's not a position someone bestows upon you. It's not something you put on a business card. It is a mindset. And if you have the interest in making anyone else around you, I shouldn't say making, helping anyone else around you get to become a better version of themselves, we are all coaches. Two things that come to mind. One is just uh, two books that are really good. Uh, one is called The Coaching Habit, and the other is called The Advice Trap. And it's both by, mm. both by um, his last name is Stan, Stanier, S-T-A-N-I-E-R. Um, incredible. The, the basic mm. philosophy, the basic premise of both of those books is that we are or can be coaches across the board. Mm. And here's how to do it. The advice trap is um, is about what it sounds like, which is stop giving advice and coach in a way that uh, allows the person you are coaching to, with you, come up with not only the solution, but come up with the right problem. So those, again, both great books. But the, but the first thing that came to my head is it's a, it's a story that you used to tell years and years ago, I think during the Affiliate Excellence Seminar, you were talking about similar, that's popped in my head because it was, I think, another study that they did where a group of teachers, maybe there was like split students up into two groups and uh, effectively like one group of teachers were told, you're going to get the advanced kids. You're going to get uh, the smart kids. And then yes. the other teacher was like, here's everybody else. <laughs> And yes. what had happened was it's the, they inverted who those teachers actually got. So the teachers who thought they were getting the advanced group got the quote unquote, like, you know, average, whatever. And the teachers who thought they were in the average kids got the advanced group. And what happened is because the teachers thought that they had the quote unquote smart kids, they treated those, they taught, they treated, they responded differently than the group of teachers who had the the you're, the, you're, the, 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 yeah. the the teachers that got the 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 troubled kids troubled, yes, thought yes. that they were getting the advanced kids. Yes. And when their teachings weren't getting through, mm, that's what they it, yes, good. assumed you missed, yeah, I missed that part. Yes. yes they assumed Damn. that the kids were were f phenomenal yep. advanced they kids. They took responsibility. And what they did was they took responsibility yeah. and goes, I'm not teaching this the right way. Yeah. So let I'm me not, double back. Let me figure yeah, out. Yeah, let me where figure out I how I can get this through to them because obviously this is on me. Yep. I love that. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. My point being for Sergio, to, again, to your point, which was that it might be the, it might be the student, there's, there's yep. responsibility there, but it might also be the way you're presenting it, the way you're, you're acting, thinking I'm the coach here. You need to do what I say because you said you, you moved here so I could tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And it could be that this is one of those things that each of them needs to meet each other in the middle versus both of them waiting for the other one to come to me. Yeah. And there's so many different ways. Like we could talk, you know, we could do an entire, not single episode, but entire podcast just on coaching. Right. And I, I, you know, one of the things that's really important when you're having a hard time getting through to people is giving people the freedom to explore the solutions yeah. through their own. So you ask the right questions. Yeah. You, Which is what both those books are all about. Love it. Asking if right you're questions. asking the right questions, then the person comes up with the answer and the process and the goals themselves, and now they own that, yeah. as opposed to me telling you something to do, and it's built into us as humans to like, I'm going to resist against that yeah. because that's not mine, that's yours, and I want to feel self-important mm -hmm. that I am the one, the, I am the creator of my environment. So you have to, as a coach, work your way around that ego-driven self. Very cool. We keep talking about that, but we're going to be back in just a minute. We've got a question from a listener about whether or not uh, we think that CrossFit being delivered in affiliates could be considered watered down. So stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Element. Head to drinkelement.com slash excellence to get yourself the best electrolyte mix on the market. Question for you, Ben. For a long time, folks have derided the value of salt. Why are we talking about more salt? Yeah, I like the saying of don't blame salt for sugar's fault. <laughs> it's kind of like the carbohydrate thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that carbs are necessarily bad. It's that excess carbs are bad. And where do we find excess carbs? Primarily in processed food. So you see that you draw those connections. It's the same thing here. But if we're eating a clean diet, 
we're not really getting salt. Yeah. There isn't salt in apples. And when you get- You don't a, put salt on your apples? Exactly. <laughs> you get the idea, right? Yeah, it's, totally. just, it's not there. Where is it? In processed foods, in spades. Yeah. We should be getting a thousand milligrams per hour of activity. That's what that we have in these packets. I found it to be the easiest way to talk to my athletes about how, what's the appropriate way to supplement with salt. We used to actually go like, put pink Himalayan sea salt, sea mm, salt on yep. a tablespoon, yep. drop that in your water. Well, this is a much more convenient, much more tasty way to do that thing. Right now, Element is offering our listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packs for free with any Element order. It's a great way to taste all eight flavors. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash excellence. Deal is only available through that link. The, the URL, D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash excellence. We are brought to you this week by the fine folks at 8sleep. Head to 8sleep.com slash excellence and upgrade your sleep situation and save $150 on their pod cover. The pod cover is exactly what it sounds like. It is a cover that goes over your mattress and allows you to measure your sleep quantity, your sleep quality, your sleep routine, and importantly, the temperature of the bed, which has been wonderful. I set it automatically so that at 945, it's nice and warm. Yes. This has been my favorite thing. So I've I've used different sleep trackers. I've used different temperature regulators, but this, uh, like I'm not going back. And one of the biggest things is this super cool thing where it's so nice in the winter to get into a warm yes. bed. Heather used to make fun of me all the time because I would always get in bed before her and I would do this thing with my <laughs> feet. I would scissor them back and forth real fast. Like, <laughs> she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I got to warm up my feet. The feet area section. <laughs> the foot of the bed, yeah. we call that. Yeah. yeah. The, everyone knows that we're supposed to sleep in a cool environment, which I like in the middle of the night yes. without eight sleep. Here's my normal routine. Get in, freezing cold bed, <laughs> try really hard to warm it up. Yep. One o'clock in the morning, sweating bullets. And then in the morning, again, kind of like the temperature is not the same as the room, so I don't want to get out of bed. Eight sleep gets rid of all of it. It's amazing. You can set the temperature for your bedtime so it's nice and warm or, or cool in the summer. So you're getting into a bed that you want to get yes. into. And then in the morning, you can actually go through these different waves as the temperature is actually meeting not only what you need physiologically, but what you want emotionally from a comfort <laughs> perspective. If you want an emotional connection to your bed, head to eightsleep.com slash excellence. Save $150 on the pod cover. It's the best offer you'll find, but you've got to go to eightsleep.com slash excellence for that $150 off. They are currently shipping within the US, Canada, and the UK, as well as select countries in the EU and Australia. One more time, eightsleep.com slash excellence. All right, we are back. We got a question from Candice. She says, through my eight years of doing CrossFit, I've done comp train on and off at different gyms with groups of competitors. Even though I don't have any intention of competing at a high level, I love being challenged and getting better with this type of program. But now CrossFit gyms are pushing toward a watered down program because they think uh, outsiders find fit people too scary and they want the workouts to be easy for them. I find myself choosing to work out in my garage gym alone more than going to class because I worry I would lose my fitness, but now I'm missing out on the community. How do people like myself find a place in CrossFit gyms these days when it seems like gyms no longer support high levels of fitness? The, fo the focus is now only on the brand new. So I thought, what a wonderful excuse to go back to conversations we've, you know, generally and kind of community wide we've been having. I literally remember being in this gym when Reebok announced their first initial, like their partnership. And I remember there was, there was a bunch, I don't remember what the heck we were doing. Maybe it was something with again faster, but like Dave Lipson was there. It was a bunch of games athletes. And I was like, and I just asked, I was like, what do we, what do we fear will happen? Like, what's the downside of this happening? Right. Cause I was just genuinely curious what all, you know, all these smart people thought. I remember Dave Lipson thinking, that they water down CrossFit. Mm. I don't know if that means anything to this particular conversation, but like literally we've been having this conversation since 20, whatever. So that Candace, year, it's Reebok's fault. It's Reebok's <laughs> fault. So, okay. So we can go, I think this conversation can go in yeah. different directions, but I'd love just having listened to the question, having heard the, like just what's your uh, initial thoughts. Cut. Okay. So first, I'll give a blush. very, very short, very direct answer to this. Sure. If, um, Candice, you followed CompTrain, CompTrain for on and off for eight years. You did it in um, some affiliates and um, and then worked and did some extra stuff with competitors. Now you're in your garage following it. 
We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gyms that follow comp train programming that is not watered down. Yep. Find one of those gyms. So on the app, you have the ability to go, you will, if I don't know when this is coming out. It'll be close. Okay. <laughs> not quite, but close. Coming, coming soon. <laughs> That's right. To a little phone tease. near you. It's not why I put this question in here, but it's the so timing is, is good. The timing. And this is isn't actually. I. I. This is not the answer. This is the short, fast. Yeah. Like this is like the real. Like this you can. Solution. You can do this. Like right. Exactly. <laughs> we'll talk about all the other philosophical yeah. Yeah. approaches yeah, yeah. and all that. But for right now, the easiest way is find a comp train gym. They do comp train programming. Comp train programming is very challenging, very hard, not watered down. You will get incredibly fit. And it lines up exactly with all of the extra accessory work that you can do outside of it. So you're not messing up tomorrow's workout. You also have the community inside and outside the gym. If you want to one day stay at home and do it in your garage, you can follow along, do it there. That would be my, the real actionable mm -hmm. one, right? And then it becomes in this conversation of like, right. okay, broader question. Yeah. Not, has not it gotten watered down? Games. And yeah. like, has it gotten watered yeah. down? Like, what do we feel about that? Um, Depends on what we mean by watered down. Yeah. Um, and it also depends on the gyms because um, it depends on what you're, you're chasing. So here's the other, like, there are a lot of gyms that don't understand effective programming. Yep. And because they don't understand effective programming, it might look, quote, watered down because they're not programming for appropriate levels of uh, power output. We call it horsepower bias training. And if a gym, if an owner, if a coach, whoever's doing the program doesn't understand that fundamental theory, the programming is going to look off and you're not going to be able to point your finger on exactly why it is, but that's the reason. The second reason it might look watered down is a little more obvious is that they're not doing the high skill or the high loads. Yep. So yeah, if they're not doing handstand push-ups and muscle ups and squat snatches and they're not throwing around a 155 and 185 pounds over their head, like it's going to look watered down if they're doing kettlebell burpee box jump run. Like I get that as well. What's my take on that? Well, that's a little bit for each box owner to decide on where they want to go to because Candace isn't wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's like saying like, I want to open up a boxing gym and we're just going to like, you know, put on these mitts that like you slide your hands into and you punch a bag for 40 minutes to music. And like, it's like a spin class, but with a boxing bag, yep. guess what? That's going to be a lot more accessible than for the first three days, you're learning how to tape your knuckles. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. and, and on week three, you you're you have a headgear on and yeah. you're punching someone back. Like, yep. yeah, like, is that watered down? 100%. Is that more accessible to masses? 100%. Like, so yeah, it's like up to the gym owner to figure out where they want to go on that spectrum. I'll say where we are in our journey right now, because we've kind of done the, the full totality of this thing. Yeah. In the beginning, we were here to get people better at the sport of CrossFit. It was a sport. And we believed that if we were not a CrossFit gym, but let's say we were a running club. Well, the objective of our running club would have been to get people to participate and do better in a 5K. Yep. Or maybe a 10K or a half marathon, a marathon, whatever it might be. But the idea is like, let's get these people into a competition and improve their performance in a competition. That's the way we operated CrossFit New England for probably the first six years, seven years, somewhere in there. Two thousand, you know, We opened in 2007 and probably through 2012, 13. That's certainly where we were. I think... 2015 to 2019, we were, uh, we didn't really have a strong identity. Yeah, we didn't know say, a little bit in the middle. Yeah. We were yeah. probably in the middle of all this stuff. We were doing stuff, but we probably, we weren't pushing people to compete in the open as much. Um, we stopped sending multiple teams, um, to try to compete at the CrossFit games. Um, so but we were still definitely doing handstand push-ups and squat snatches. And it was a lot about leaderboards um, and improving performance. Then 
um, around 2000, maybe 2000, yeah, maybe COVID-ish, yeah. we went the other end of the spectrum and we went l- low skill, longer workouts, bigger endurance, um, w- more boot campy ish It was like boot camp with barbells yep. is essentially what it was. But let's not do the muscle ups. Let's not do the handstand pushups. Um, um, box jumps are all step down. So we minimize, we're really into like minimizing um, potential injuries. Yeah. So the idea was no steps back, like is a boxing thing. Mm-hmm. Instead of let's get in the ring and you might get a black eye or a concussion or break a rib. No, it, let's mitigate his injuries as close as we can. Um, can't always go to zero, even in that spin class thing, there's a chance that- You fall off the bike. Yeah, someone's, yeah, your, your pedal slips off and it comes and whacks you in the shin, right? Yeah. There's always that case. Yeah. But we went as close to that end as we possibly could while still working with barbells. Mm-hmm. Um, and we found that we did lose a little bit off the top end of our fitness. So we've kind of centered ourselves back where I would say today, and maybe that's just because we are, we're here today. And if you ask me this in five years, I'll go, <laughs> no, we missed the mark <laughs> then too. <laughs> yep. I believe that we're squared up right in that sweet spot of, and this is, the, this is the idea behind comp train in general, is if you want to um, compete in the sport of CrossFit, we're the program for you. Mm-hmm. If you have no interest in the sport of CrossFit, but you want really high levels of fitness, we're the program for you. Mm-hmm. If you want a, a more capacity and um, an engine and strength than anyone else in your sport that you compete in, this program can get you there as well. So we positioned ourselves in this place that we believe is a a jumping off point for anything else that you want to do. Um, And that's the way we set it up now. So it's not just like we're driving third wave adaptations to try to get two teams to qualify for semifinals, hopefully get a team on the podium. It's not that at all, but it's also not, hey, let's come on in and do this uh, 45 minute boot camp class. Mm -hmm. It's that hybrid between the two of those things. So we don't lean as far into the higher skills. We don't lean as far into the higher weights as somebody that's trying to compete at the sport would, but we are doing power snatches. We're doing um, um, 30 inch box jumps. We're doing heavy deadlifts. We're doing um, you know, uh, thrusters for reps at 155. Like there's still that level of, um, you look at this thing, you, no one would ever go, that's watered down. Mm-hmm. And I believe, I believe in that spot, but me is mostly because that's where I am personally in my right. journey as well. So it strikes me that, um, in order to figure out like, is that watered down? There's a degree to which you've got to figure out, like you've got to figure out the scale in which we're talking here. And so Yep. By which I mean, like, if there's water down, then the other side of that needs to sort of be extreme. I don't know what else to call it. Let's just call it like there's extreme. (laughs) Extreme CrossFit. Yeah. So there's that. And then somewhere in the middle, and then there's watered down CrossFit. I would actually, so what I would actually go before that is I would go, where is CrossFit on the spectrum, on, on the totality of the fitness spectrum? Sure. Yep. Right. So on one end you have um, curves yep. and, um, Richard Simmons and, um, you know, sit on your couch and do some glute squeezes, right? That's the one that's, that's the farthest left on the spectrum and do glute squeezes. Okay. Right. That's yep. the thing. <laughs> it is now, uh, but yeah. And then yep. on the other end of the spectrum, you probably honestly have like programs that are going to help you train for the, for, for CrossFit, right? you know, Maybe you'd also put like um, a Navy SEAL prep program in there, but I would actually even put like the cro- honestly like yeah. the the CrossFit Games prep programming is the farthest other end of that spectrum. So we're saying like the three hour or more than that in the gym every yes. day is let's say you're spending three or four, three hours, four hours doing CrossFit training in the gym, it's five to six. That's days the a other. Week. So you, yeah. on one you have glute squeezes on the couch. Yeah. The others you have. Um, high level competitive CrossFit programming designed to get you to try to win the CrossFit games. Yep. Okay. Now where's, where's water down CrossFit fall in that spectrum? Mm-hmm. Well, it's already past halfway. Way, yeah. Yep. Right. Cause halfway is probably like a soul cycle. Yep. You know, it's probably that it's probably like hot yoga. 
it's probably a like a, it's probably like watered down boot camp because mm-hmm. I'd even put like a normal boot camp on the closer side to the the CrossFit competitive programming. Mm-hmm. So already in terms of that spectrum, where are we? Even watered down CrossFit, and again, it depends on what we mean by watered down. Because, but the way I envision it, um, where is it in that spectrum? Mm-hmm. And then, so where between those two things, like the argument here that Candace is making is, I wanted to be closer to the extreme. Yep. Not all the way because she's clearly not like she yep. says. She says I'm not trying to compete. I just want uh, so closer to that. And her argument is that it's too close to the watered down. And so I guess yep. my question is. Like, how big a gap is that between what she wants and and yeah. what you know? I, I hesitate to say what she needs, yep. but maybe maybe that is the no. Right it's word. a gap. Yeah, she's right. There's there is a gap there. It's because we experienced it here firsthand when we went to the watered down like kettlebell swings and biking and running and box jumps and um you know we, we stepped away from the heavier barbells and the high, our top end it it. it it came down yep. and particularly our strength came down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. We now do in our affiliate strength training three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are doing strength before the Metcon. When we stepped away from that, it, it went down. Yep. It, it did. Now, I don't think that Gen Pop, which Candice, we are yep. a, a, a part of, needs much more than that. Mm-hmm. So... We have it in our programming if you want to do that. If Candace wants to spend two hours a day training, even in more than less than that, but um, they, we have that in the comp training program. We can get strength every day if you wanted it. But if the question is this watered down versus this kind of like true, authentic CrossFit ethos, um, is there a difference there? The answer is yes, mm-hmm. there is. There definitely, definitely is. And someone like Candace is going to feel that difference. Yep. New member off the street that's coming off of doing soul cycle and yoga three times a week is not going to feel the difference between that at all yep. for the first six months to almost maybe even two years because they're going to be getting so much stronger, so much fitter, so much faster. And you might even argue that's the better fit for them, which is why gyms are doing that. Yep. So Candace is wrong. They're doing it yep. because they know the the benefits. If you want to open up a boxing gym and the goal is to get people to compete in the Golden Gloves, your membership is going to be a lot smaller than let's set up thirty bags and do it to a strobe light and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with some pump up music. Yep. Like that's the more watered down version of boxing. It's more it's more conducive to what most people actually need. Mm-hmm. So where do you come down on, given given that you've sort of, tri- you've tried across the spectrum here, given that you are trying to run a business, given that you understand the the challenges therein of running yeah. such a business, yeah. are gyms, you kind of just said it, but I, I want to I wanna pull it apart a little bit, is are gyms right to offer, again, I don't like, because like, what does it mean? But like this quote unquote watered down version of CrossFit, where maybe there are more kettlebell swings and lunges than there are uh, muscle snatches and chest bar pull-ups, right? Like whatever that, are they right to do that from a, from the perspective of 90% of the people who walk in here for the first time are nowhere near ready for muscle snatches and chest bar pull-ups. And so we need to meet them where they are. And if I want 200 members, 250 members, it's going to be a lot more likely that I find 200 people who need that than I'm going to find 200 people or 250 people who are ready for uh, whatever I said, muscle snatches and chest bar pull-ups. So all to say... Her, her recognition that the a lot of CrossFit gyms these days are catering to the brand new. Are CrossFit gyms wrong to do that? No, even if they're not. Even so, if it means we have to quote unquote a, water down. It depends program. on what the owner is trying to do. These are not franchises. The owner is, what are they motivated to do? So if the motivation is to be more financially viable, you're opening up the pool when you make it more accessible. I mean, like this is like yep. this is like, you know, macroeconomics 101, right? So if you're making it more accessible, you have a bigger population you can pull from. Case in point, the growth of High Rocks. Yep. So High Rocks is a accessible fitness competition. So there's 
very there's no high so it's, skill it's movement. It's a lot of running. It's a lot of like pulling and. It's like, just there's no skill. Yeah, you're gonna push the sled. You're gonna farmer carry. You're gonna do burpees. The highest skill thing in it is wall balls, mm -hmm. and that's the last movement in the whole thing. Got it. So it's very, very, very accessible. It's rowing, skiing, uh, sled pushing, lunging, burpees, and wall balls with running in between. The sport is growing 100% year over year. Yep. By next year, the projections are that they, they only started four years ago and they had 600 participants. They're projected this year to have 200,000 participants. Well... CrossFit has been around for 15 years and we have 300,000 participants in the open. Yep. Like drop the mic. It's like, if you want the more viable business model, High Rocks is a more, this is gonna, my CrossFit friends aren't gonna like this. Yeah. It's a more viable business model because more people will do it. Yeah. There are tens of thousands of people that go to a Spartan race on a given day a singular day, they'll have 30,000 people go through an event in a weekend. Like that's not happening at CrossFit competitions. Yep. If you go to your local CrossFit competition, it's a big one if there's 300. Yep. This is this is 10 to 100X of that. It's way, way, way more accessible. Now, why haven't I gone that way? It's because it's not gonna produce the highest levels of fitness. Mm -hmm. So where do you fall in that? If it's the business model solely, then get it to be the biggest. It's like, do you want this little, do you want to be talking to a population of a hundred or 10,000, mm -hmm. right? Do you want a population of a million or a hundred million? It's that. But there is a group, there is a population that want this thing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to provide a service for them, this thing being really high levels of fitness. Yeah. Then, then it's not going to be the water down. Yep. It's not that. It's not hard because it's work capacity across broad time, modal domains. You being able to be, have a certain level of strength, having a certain level of skills is a part of fitness. And that takes time to teach and that takes time to learn. It takes time to develop. And if you want to get your clients there, it's a different product offering. Mm -hmm. So how... We have decided that we're not going for the masses. The goal is not to get a thousand people in the gym. The goal is to get these 300 as fit and functionally viable and mentally as formidable and live as long as possible. That's the goal. And the way we're going to get there is this kind of not the games program, because that doesn't make sense, is that two or three notches back from that. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe to wrap up, I, 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 it's an impossible question to answer, but I, I, what, what do you think Greg Glassman would say to this particular conversation or this particular question? Like where would, uh, and for those folks who don't know, uh, Greg Glassman's the one who um, co-founded CrossFit. So I just, out of curiosity, like where do you think yeah. he would come down on, you know, the current state of affairs, right, in 2023, with this kind of question in front of him? You know, I think about the, before he, um, before he left, handed off reins, call it whatever you want to call it. You know, there were the the videos of old folks in their pretend living room with uh, jugs of water, right? Literally watering, watering it down. Like, uh, is that the argument he was trying to make effectively or not? We can decide. Like, where would he, and maybe more broadly, where would the, the CrossFit? Yeah, I think that he would be um, into CrossFit being more watered down. Yeah. I mean, that's the way he was going, you know, yeah. no pun intended with the water yeah, jugs, right. but that was make it as accessible yeah. as possible. Yep. And if we're, if, if our programming has 135 pounds squat snatches and ring muscle ups once a week, we're not doing, you know, it, then you go, yeah, but you can scale it down and make it accessible. But truly what is like, you know, he said, like, if I have a, if I have 10 people in my class that need to lose a hundred pounds, I, I'm putting them on a on a a psych a bike yep. for an hour and watching um, that sugar film. Yep. Like let's let's watch movies that teach you about nutrition, and while you cycle for an hour. Yep. I think that the CrossFit purists 
have a really hard time with that mm-hmm. because CrossFit is the pinnacle of it is the sport. Yep. And we grew up with the sport as the defining thing of what it is that we do at the highest level. And I think that there's a lot of people that would go, it's not CrossFit unless you're using barbells. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's insane. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's concentrated mm-hmm. function, but it's sort of high intensity. Like you could do that with anything. Yep. You don't even, is it, it, it's nice to have a weighted implement, but not necessary. Um, so I think that he would edge towards the more accessible version for everybody. I think that's why he had a hard time with the CrossFit games in general. Yeah. Um, and I think that the people at the helm now, starting with Rosa, when Rosa came in, he was a fan of the sport. Yeah. So it's like, no, let's pull that, let's yeah. pull that was, arm back in. They were in. drifting it away. And then yeah, now it's it like, yeah, yep. exactly. Let's pull that lifeboat back in. And this is a part of us. I think this is truly at the crux of, of what's at, um, one of the things that's potentially holding back the continued growth and development of the platform and the sport is this dichotomy between these two things. And if we're going to go, no, the sport is a part of this, then we should also have the willingness and acceptance to go, no, then the watered down version is a part of this as well. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. It's that bell shaped curve. And the majority, you're going to fall into a place that what, like maybe something we're doing, that, that approach. Yep. And there's going to be a handful of people that want to chase the, the super high third wave adaptations, um, fit as human alive. And there's going to be a handful of people that are going to, um, may never even do CrossFit with a barbell yep. and may never um, actually even hang from an apparatus, yep. but they can still do this thing. Yep. And where should the the totality of the the CrossFit um, HQ and everyone push towards? I would like to see some sort of level of um, standardization. Mm-hmm. I, I this is me flipping on my because I <laughs> I know forever I yeah. said like let us do it the way we want to do it. Yeah. Best practices rise to the top. Um, but at some point you do have to look at the best practices and say. Let's pick those and then go forward with what we've learned. Well said. Yeah. Well said. We have yeah. done that. Yeah, that, exactly. We have not done yeah. that. Why are we not doing that? Because because the the it, be, quite frankly because Greg Glassman's libertarian perspective was if if you're not doing it well you'll fail. And that's what's weird is that we continue with that yeah. that political view of how we should be running the organization and it's infiltrated like. No, like I'm an affiliate owner that's been an affiliate owner for 15 years and fairly successful doing it. Give me an example PL, please. Yep. How much of my revenue should I be expected to pay in rent? How much what is a um what is a normal um square footage I should have for X amount of clients? And if I'm gonna have that many clients, how many rowers should I like give us help not the affiliate playbook the way it's structured right now and it's helpful and it's all the rest but no give us the real things now you don't have to say you need to do it that way which we've been scared to do forever but don't shy away from actually giving us the resources this is how you do x y and z in the affiliate Mm -hmm. like i want to know um how much should i be paying myself as an owner on day one Mm -hmm. What is the normal with that when I'm shopping around for insurance, what should I be paying for insurance? Like these are the super yeah. helpful things. I know it's kind of like tangential yeah. to yeah. so the yeah. conversation, but I think that there should be some level of standardization also in terms of approach. Cause I get it. Like this is one of the, the hard things about the CrossFit ecosystem is someone goes, Hey, I'm traveling to Charleston, South Carolina next weekend. Do you have a gym that you can recommend for me? I would love to go to find a CrossFit gym. Yeah. It's hard to do that because you don't know where what you're sending them to. Are you sending them to a gym that's going to be all about competing in the sport of CrossFit and it's all and the person's going to get like blown out of the water and like or is it going to be this super watered down version where it's a it'd be nice if there was it's just like so it's my thing. I think that we could standardize the affiliate experience. Um I'm not saying you have to franchise it, but you could actually like create some structure to it. You don't need to have like mandated best practices. You don't need that, but like just here's the way you run a CrossFit gym. Um, And maybe I'm saying one thing and asking for another. And then the other part is 
I'm at the point now where I think that they should sell off the CrossFit games. Mm, that's interesting. It's not like, to me, like you had your shot. Yeah. Like the growth that was experienced from 2007 through 2017 was astronomical. Yeah. What have we done since 2017? Like what, what's, what's, what's the improvements that have been made since 2017? Now, I think being noble, being a part of it is really, really cool. Yeah. But in terms of the exposure, in terms of the media, in terms of the athlete experience, in terms of the test, um, on the, the growth trajectory, it's flatlined at best yeah. at like 2016, we were getting in planes. Yeah. And we we're flying to different places. Yep. It's like it now, was, you could you make the case that both both of those have have flattened and, both and, the and affiliate the media, and the right yeah and the so, media we were putting out about the games was like road to the games and the fittest films and Savon's behind the scenes like and all of that like excitement that came around and like we got to know these athletes because HQ was promoting them yep. well. Think about some other sports that have really made some big leaps over the last few years. Formula One mm -hmm. sold off to a media company who created a program called Drive to Survive. Mm -hmm. And that drove crazy amounts of interest in the sport in the United States. It's always a big sport worldwide, yep. but it didn't exist in the United States. It was in the IndyCar, which is like, there's been dwarfed. It doesn't even know. And, um, Stock car, Daytona 500. Yep. Formula One is the the race car event now because of this Netflix series, Full Swing with golf. Like they're creating, yeah. they're creating hype around the sport through media. So CrossFit went through CrossFit. You were part of it. Yep. CrossFit was a media company. Yep. We're a media company. That's how they defined themselves inside the walls. We are a media company. That's our jobs. That's what we do. That's our product is media until one day in 2000 X, whenever that was 17, 16, 17, 16, probably where they, they fired, they fired the media the department. Media yeah. it, like they literally went, it went bye bye. It went completely gone yeah. since that time. What's happened to the growth of the sport? Mm -hmm. What's happened to the growth of affiliates? Like the, the affiliates have flatlined, the sports flatlined. Yep. So if you're, if we're not going to do it ourselves, Give it to somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Okay, we'll pick that up again later, but we've got to wrap it up for now. We will be back uh, in just a minute with a new shout out and uh, our cool down is going to be introducing another new 30 day challenge. So stay tuned. We are brought to you this week with support from our friends at Ice Barrel. Head to icebarrel.com slash excellence and use the code excellence to get yourself the best and easiest way to bring ice baths to your daily routine and save a little bit of money. Why ice baths? A lot of people hear that and think, well, that's just crazy. Well, they're not wrong. <laughs> True. It is. But that's True. like yes. when people hear CrossFit, they go, well, that's kind of crazy, yep. right? And a lot of the things to quotes, the masses will seem extreme. We talk a lot about stress and its varying forms on this podcast. And what we're looking for is E stress, like E U mm -hmm. stress, which is a good stress, yep. which is said so it's called hormesis, yep. right? Which is your body will go through a cellular adaptation to acute levels of stressors like a workout, like strength training, like an ice barrel. That's why we can involve this in our whole health regiment routine as one of the practices we can lean into when your body goes into that acute fight or flight shock response, mm -hmm. there is good things that happen on a cellular level for us. So that type of stress, unlike the, the daily grindy stress that we never get to walk away from yep. is the healthy thing is the thing that we can incorporate into our, a practice. Cool. If you want to get some good stress into your life, Ice Barrel is the way to go. Head to icebarrel.com slash excellence and use the code excellence to save $150. Ice Barrel offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Head to icebarrel.com slash excellence and use the code excellence to save $150. All righty. Let's start with a shout out. Shout out is when we take just a moment to read a message 
or a review or a YouTube comment from a listener, just as our way of saying thank you. This is from Mar. I love this note. Just like uh, she says, just like you do not want a great book or movie to end. I love listening to you and Ben so much on Chasing Excellence. I am bummed when the episode ends. Even as a 69-year-old grandmother who is at, who is at the point of my 15-year involvement with CrossFit, mm. where my goal is to be a kick-ass 90-year-old, mm. I get so motivated listening to you too. Keep up the good work, bringing your message to the masses. We will, Mar. Heck yeah, Mar. Thank and you. And just because of that, we're not going to stop this episode. Yeah, we're- It's just going to keep going, Mar, for you. <laughs> We're never done. <laughs> All right. But we are going to be done. We're going to do our uh, new cool, our, our cool down is going to be a new 30 uh, day challenge. And we were right before we hit record, we were debating on what the right way to do this. So we need to settle it as we go. Yeah. But here's my pitch. And then you can tell me why I'm slightly wrong. My pitch was 270,000 steps for the next 30 days. That evens out to 9,000 steps a day. And I'll tell you why I came up with 9,000. A couple of reasons. One is uh, smarter people than I have realized that. The, you know, everybody says 10,000 steps a day. Great. But smarter people than I have realized that the, the, the real magic is probably in the, like the 7,500, 8,000 to 9,000, 10,000 range. So there's not, it's not uniformly clearly better that you get 10,000 than 9,000. So that's argument one that I have. Argument two is that I've been doing this for, I would say like two months now and 10,000 a day is, a, is like a, like I got to be out side on the treadmill till like 930 some nights what? just For to get 10th. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't walk that much. And so what I tend to do at the end of the day is I like, I like, well, how much do I need? And I go do that. You're and the so, person that's like, when you're doing macros, doesn't eat all day. Cause uh, you can like yeah. save your macros and you, well, I'm not like, saving. I don't want to save these it's steps. The opposite. It's just the opposite. No, it's, it's the exact opposite. Yeah. yeah. You wait till so the my, end of the day to yeah. do it. Right. So my point is 9,000 is like within the normal scope of my life, which is weird and different, but not that much different than most people. 9,000 is difficult, but doable. 10,000 tends to be difficult without being as doable as I would like it. And so that's why it's a weird number, 270,000 steps. Your argument is that's too much math and too many numbers and just do 10,000. Yeah. So I'm not, Compl- I will give you the final word. I just wanted to make my case mine for is, why mine my is, number is And I'll weird. make mine very simple. <laughs> Complexity is the enemy of execution. Simplicity always wins. 30 days, 10K a day, 30K. But uh, but, but I'm- I'm, Let's do it. Because I'm I'm equally like, okay, there's no no benefit. Here's why why I'm totally fine to do yours, which is because some days 9,000 is like, I got it. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm done. But some days, like the day I got a whole a thousand mosquito bites, black fly bites, I got like 16,000 because my day was just different. And so if we're looking at this as a 30 day total, I'm getting for 300. Yeah. And so just, that's what we're saying. Yeah. It's not 10K a day. Right. It's, th- it's 300,000. 300,000 yep. in 30 days. Yep. And I only said 9K a day because I wanted to give a sense of like how, how much is that. So that's how I came to that. 10K but a day. 10K a day average gives us 300,000 over the course of 30 days. Okay. And that's the goal. That's the challenge. Um. How hard is that going to be for you? I have no idea. I don't. I don't have a. <laughs> that's number. actually. That's true. So actually. I actually need to figure out how to how do to this without. How, so how many miles is ten thousand steps? Um, I would guess four and a half or five miles. Ooh, that's, yeah, that is a lot. Yeah, because usually I'm aiming for like four and a half miles. I don't is get my nine thousand. Yeah, I bet I don't get that. Yeah, I I like I have to supplement my fitness with walking is so my game it. plan is to go for a midday walk every day. Yep. Um, I'll probably do a post workout walk every day. And then I'll probably try to like once I'm saying once a week, it's not going to happen. Do I'll probably, one. I'll probably twice over the 30 days, um, walk to work. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And how, how far is that? Like th- three and a half miles. Okay. That's, that's right up there. That's okay. doable. I love that. All right. So we will be checking in with everybody uh, over the next few weeks. And I'll get a couple hikes in as well. All right. Amazing. We'll uh, we'll continue talking about it. Uh, we do invite you to join us. Thank you so much. 10K for a day for 30 days. Day. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your ratings and your reviews. Thank you for sharing the show with a friend. Ben and I will be back next week for another episode of Chasing Excellence.